What's going on, guys? Brendan Schaefer back with another video on Major League Baseball. I wanted to focus on a former Cardinal in this conversation, Jordan Montgomery, who, of course, signed with the Arizona Diamondbacks back in spring training and didn't perform well this season, was part of that Scott Boris group of players in the offseason that was looking for contracts, and it bled over into the beginning of spring. Uh, for Monty, I think it was very close to the beginning of the season. I don't remember the exact date that he signed, but obviously didn't have a full spring training, and the results that followed were disappointing. I think he finished with a 6.23 earned run average. Eventually, Arizona demoted him to the bullpen. And right now, sour, fury, uh, sour feelings, I should say, in D-backs land because they missed the playoffs on the final day. They were the team that was hoping to see a sweep on Monday in that doubleheader between the Braves and the Mets. The team split the games. Both of them ended up making the playoffs as a result, and the D-backs are left on the outside looking in. But what's interesting is yesterday from the Burns and Gambo show, a radio show based in Arizona, I assume, conversation last night that was going a little bit viral, making the rounds on social media with Diamondbacks owner Ken Kendrick, who was asked about the Montgomery signing and had this to say, I'll play the clip for you. I don't think I've ever heard an owner or really any executive front office person in baseball say something to the effect of what this guy right here said. Uh, well, not this guy. This guy's the guy asking the question. But what owner Ken Kendrick had to say about the Jordan Montgomery signing in the offseason for Arizona. Here's this clip. But Jordan Montgomery was $25 million, and he pitched to an ERA well over six and got demoted to the bullpen. How disappointed yeah. are you in uh, that signing? Let me say it the best way I can say it. If anyone wants to blame anyone for Jordan Montgomery being a Diamondback, you're talking to the guy that should be blamed because I brought it to their attention. I pushed for it. They agreed to it. It wasn't in our game plan. You know when he was signed right at the end of spring training. And looking back, in hindsight, a horrible decision you know, to, to have invested that money in a guy that performed as poorly as he did. It's our biggest mistake this season from a talent standpoint. And I'm the perpetrator of that. Well, there you have it. Tell us how you really feel, Ken Kendrick. Listen, I know Jordan Montgomery wasn't good this year for the Diamondbacks. Anybody that can look at his baseball reference page can understand that. But have you ever heard with such blunt candor uh, the, the team owner saying, yep, I it was my fault. We shouldn't have signed this guy to the whatever $25 million contract, whatever it is that he made this season and I'm the one that's responsible for it, and we never should have done it. Sometimes you do tend to hear the truth and the real feelings come out about a player that, that let's say a, a guy, you know, has a tenure with a team that doesn't go well, doesn't end up being a good signing, or, you know, whatever the case might be. You might hear some of that come out after the fact. That's not totally unusual. What is a little bit unusual is the fact that Jordan Montgomery is still technically under contract with the Diamondbacks. He has a player option, not a team option, a player option. I'm looking at it on baseball reference. It was described by a few different people on Twitter at $22.5 million. I'm seeing a $20 million player option uh, that, that was a, a vesting option if he started 10 games in 2024. And then it says the option value may increase up to by up to $5 million. So I guess he probably met some incentives to where if you started X amount of games this year, um, because, again, they, they maybe didn't know exactly when Jordan Montgomery was going to be ready for the season because of the fact that he missed spring training. So they bake that in there and say, hey, if he pitches this year, you know, that option will vest, and then he will have the decision, the player option of whether he wants to, to opt into that contract for 2025 or, you know, potentially he could have a really good year and go back into free agency and try to have another bite at the apple and maybe get a multi-year contract, which is what Monty, I think, was looking for in the first place. I think Boris bungled the situation as he did with a number of other players. Uh, you know, I'm sure the Boris – Co would would disagree with that interpretation but Montgomery fired him and he joined the Wasserman group and that's his agency now so clearly Monty was not happy with it but D-backs fans are understandably not happy with Monty and the performance that they've gotten from him this season but my goodness to say oh it's a horrible signing we signed that guy who didn't perform not necessarily anything that's wrong but just the kind of stuff that you don't really hear said especially about a player who has a decision I guess it's a decision of whether or not to to accept the $22 million option and be on your team or at least on your payroll next year. And after comments like that from Ken Kendrick, maybe Monty accepts the option and, and they have to pick it up because it's a player option. 
and they might just DFA him. They might just say, you know, good luck wherever you go. We'll pay you your money because we have to contractually if you pick up, if, if you accept the option. And, you know, we kind of go from there. That's blunt commentary for a player who could very well be under contract this next season. I don't know what the D-backs are going to do after hearing that. Um, I feel bad for Jordan Montgomery, right? Like he's, I don't know. He's not the type of guy that really, I think, deserves to be, you know, to be bashed so openly and bash his character and things like that. And in fairness, they're bashing his performance and his performance stunk this year. He had a 6.2 ERA. Uh, for Cardinals fans watching this video where you, you're really incensed by Miles Michaelis's performance at a 4.5 ERA, Montgomery was worse than that. But he started 21 games, option vested, so he's got the opportunity to to say as the player, I want to pick up that option. And look, maybe this was a strategy by Ken Kendrick, the, the owner, to try and get Montgomery to not select to pick up the option. And maybe that's his strategy. I don't know. Wouldn't work on me. That's the one thing I know. If you're If you're telling me I'm... I've got the decision of whether or not to be employed by your team for another year, and my salary is going to be $22.5 million if I say yes to it. I, I made the joke to Matt Rocchio on Twitter when we were going back and forth. I said they could spit on me walking into that clubhouse every day for $22.5 million, which maybe is a little bit hyperbolic, but $22.5 million for a guy that did pitch to a 6 ERA this year. So the, the notion that he's going to – like that option would have been declined if he had had a great season – and Montgomery figured, oh, I'm going to be able to get my three-year, four-year, five-year contract now um, that I was unable to procure last offseason under Scott Boris's guidance. That would be the scenario in which you wouldn't pick up the player option. He, he had a 6.2 ERA. He was demoted to the bullpen for a team that didn't end up making the playoffs. That's the contract, man. I would be picking that up in a heartbeat. There's nothing that Ken Kendrick can say to get off the hook from paying me my $22.5 million. That's the contract that was signed. And so Ken Kendrick feels like, you know what, I it is what it is. I'm going to have to pay this guy regardless. I'm going to say my mind and say my piece and, and you know, not really worry about how it impacts somebody's feelings or emotions on it. He wasn't a good pitcher, wasn't a good player for us this year. And so he kind of let it let it out there into the open. But have you ever heard that from an owner in baseball for a guy who's who's still technically on the team? Like he could... He's going to make that decision to pick up that option. I can't imagine that the mind, the Jedi mind trick, is going to work on Jordan Montgomery, where he's like, "No, it's fine. I'll, I'll, uh, you don't, you don't want me around. I won't be around. I'll do you a solid. You don't have to pick up this option. You don't have to pay me my twenty-two million dollars. I'll just kind of see what what's out there for me in free agency. Continue my career that way." Yeah, right. Not in a million years. So I feel like Monty's going to pick up his option. It's the money he's owed. That was the contract that was agreed upon. He's got every right to that money and to pick up that year. And the Diamondbacks are just going to have to decide what to do with it thereafter. But if the ownership has anything to say about it, it uh, wouldn't be surprising to see Montgomery on another team, but still being paid by Arizona next year. Um, not even really a contract that I think would be very easy to trade after you do pick up that option because, again, teams are going to look at that and say, well, is he going to be Montgomery of the 2023 World Series or is he going to be the guy that he was in 2024? Honestly, I would bet on a bounce back for Jordan Montgomery, and I think the ship for the Cardinals has probably sailed on on trying to add payroll. But if it's a situation where he would have interest in coming back, I don't know that he would probably, but it would be kind of interesting to say, hey, D backs, you can pay him, um, but we'll you know we'll pay him three million dollars. You pay the other nineteen, and uh, maybe Montgomery back in the rotation. I don't know if that works for the Cardinals just because of some of the interpersonal things, but. It could probably work for somebody. Would you really expect Montgomery to be that bad again after he was so solid for so many years? I think his season got off on the wrong foot, and I wonder if free agents in future years are going to see that as an example, as a cautionary tale, and say, hey, maybe I should try to get my butt signed before spring training so that I can maximize my performance. Because in theory, you could wait it out, wait it out, settle for that one-year pillow deal or the the, the one-year-with-an-option type of deal that Montgomery signed thinking, hey, once I pitch well, I can then go back into it again and make sure to get my big contract that I'm looking for. But that's not going to happen if you don't pitch well. And maybe it is hard to pitch well without spring training to ramp up for it. I think spring training is pretty important for those pitchers to kind of get themselves into a place where they're ready to go for the season. So let me know your thoughts on the Jordan Montgomery situation in Arizona. It's not a pretty one, but one that I still think is is going to come to a head because if I'm Monty, I'm telling him you can cash that check. I am signing this option and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned to the channel for more Cardinals and general Major League Baseball videos on the Brennan Schaefer St. Louis Cardinals Rider channel. Peace.